Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. There was a lot of back and forth over Chris J. Fearland being replaced by Mark Carney in the, inside the House of Commons. And it was all um, done under the question of how can Justin Trudeau claim to be a, liber- uh, a feminist while he replaces women that are in, in positions of power and authority. And the only people that were involved in the conversation were all um, female MPs. And I think it's a really interesting interaction and back and forth, but it goes on for quite a while. Like it goes on for probably two rounds of questions, like the time that it took, but the, the conservatives had the whole, like it moved. What you see here will move from one to the next to the next is the flow of the conversation. So even though it's like six times, it, it, from start to finish, they didn't move to any other party. Like it was just conservative, liberal, conservative, liberal, conservative, liberal. So I'll let it play right through. I, I cut out the uh, speaker and you know some of the other incidentals. Before I get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all your socials. More and more uh, independent channels like mine are being targeted because we're the only ones that are actually bringing things to light. So every time you like, every time you comment, every time you subscribe, you basically tell the liberal government that you don't agree with their policies and you tell the algorithm that you think this is information or entertainment that others might enjoy to watch as well. I'm just going to let it play through. There are some really good burns in this. So enjoy. The prime minister gave the finance minister a real vote of confidence last week as he outsourced the job that she was supposed to have been doing for four years and gave it to a man who's not even in the Liberal caucus. First, the prime minister tried to fire her in the newspaper, and now she's being shoved aside for carbon tax carney, a man focused on his own profits and his own corporate interests, who was brought in to serve as the de facto finance minister. She's lost her job responsibilities. She's lost her credibility. How long will the phantom finance minister endure? this humiliation. Mr. Speaker, I am not going anywhere. I can understand why the Conservatives prefer to focus on personal mudslinging and attacks rather than to actually talk about the economy. They don't want to talk about inflation because it's been down in the target range for seven months in a row. They don't want to talk about interest rates down three times in a row. All they can do is insult people. Who's going to tell her? She just got a demotion and he hired a guy that's not even elected to do her job. Does anyone believe that carbon tax Carney is going to tell the Prime Minister how to help a family afford groceries as the loudest cheerleader for carbon taxes ever? If the Finance Minister isn't completely humiliated by now, can she explain why Canadians should trust a man who is the number one supporter of higher taxes to do her job? Mr. Speaker, we are seeing more clearly than ever that the only thing the Conservatives know how to do is to level personal attacks and personal denigration. They do not care about Canadians and now they're scared about the facts of our economy. So let me tell you some facts. Inflation in the target range for seven months in a row. Interest rates down three times in a row, and the IMF says we'll have the strongest economic growth in the G7. Summer after he argued that Atlantic Canadian home heating oil should be carbon taxed, carbon tax loving Mark Carney spent a lovely summer of whimsy having champers at the Royal Box at Wimbledon and rubbing shoulders at a swish cocktail party with a wealthy CEO who yesterday coincidentally got millions of dollars of tax dollars. This is not someone who's in touch with the struggle of average Canadians, but neither is the Prime Minister. Did he push aside his now phantom female cabinet minister because carbon tax? loving Mark Carney could get him into fancier parties than she can. Oh! Mr. Speaker, look, I first want to begin by saying it's great to be back in this place. I, uh, I, I really did miss most people on this side. 
I can't say that I missed all of you that much, but I did miss you a little bit. Um, but what I do want to say is that it's just typical from the Conservatives that when they have an eminent Canadian, someone who has given so much to this country, who doesn't agree with their economic vision or their vision at all in Canada, they attack them. Mr. Speaker, we need to be better than this. We need to support Canadians and be grateful when they put forward for public service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. They're not even letting her answer the question anymore. <laughs> at a time when so many people are struggling to make ends meet and pleading for someone to fix the budget, I'm struggling to find a reason why the Prime Minister would put an out-of-touch elitist, active archpriest of carbon price uh, profiteering who has massive conflicts of interest in charge of the federal budget while shunting aside his female cabinet minister. What a feminist. Why does the now phantom finance minister have to get approval for Canada's fall economic statement from carbon tax conflict of interest, Mark Carney? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm actually really glad to welcome back to the QP roster right. the member for Calgary knows. <laughs> Conservatives continue cartoonish personal attacks, and that is because they are afraid to reveal to Canadians their plan for austerity and cuts, 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 because they know that's not what Canadians want. Mr. Speaker, we have two sources saying the view of some senior officials within the PMO, including Chief of Staff Katie Telford, that the Phantom Finance Minister has been ineffective in selling the government's economic policy, policies. So, my, you know, it, it's curious because we have a fake feminist Prime Minister who says he's all for women. Taxes are up, costs are up, the economy's in the toilet, and this carbon tax, Mark Carney, is now going to quadruple the carbon tax on all home heating right. across Canada. Oh, yeah. So why is this phantom finance minister okay right. with being publicly humiliated by this fake feminist prime minister? Mr. Speaker, the only people being humiliated today are Conservative MPs who have to listen to their colleagues wallow in the mud of personal character assignation. But what we are focused on is representing and working for Canadians. That's why, Mr. Speaker, the real news today is 30-year mortgage amortizations for all first-time home buyers. That's the real news. Mr. Speaker, it, it is not Conservatives saying that. It's the Prime Minister's right. Chief of Staff, Katie right. Telford, yeah. uh, for the record. And so I guess the question is before this phantom finance minister. She, she simply has two choices. You know, is she going to join the graveyard of liberal female ministers yeah. under this fake, fi uh, fake feminist prime minister? Or, you know, like Jody Wilson-Raybould, Jane Philpott, right. or will she continue to be publicly humiliated? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, what we are seeing today is the Conservatives running away from the reality about the Canadian economy. They are running away from the fact that inflation is in the Bank of Canada's target range for seven months in a row. They are running away from interest rates down three times in a row the first time in the G7, and wages outpacing inflation for 18 months. The only thing the Conservatives know how to do is traffic in cheap insults. Canadians are a lot better than that. Then they went on. That was the end of the uh, the interaction. I'll just say a couple things. One, if the economy was so good, why w why do we need Mark Carney at all? So there's a contradiction. See, everything the Liberals say is a contradiction. It's a half truth. It's a quarter. It's a smoke and mirror. It's a distracting with one hand while you pull the rabbit out of the back of the thing with the other hand. The economy is not in good shape. Remember that every time they say those, I'm going to do a video to explain it fully, but every time they say those numbers, they're only going back four weeks. So to say that it was 2% in, in August more than it was in June doesn't mean that it was 2% more than it was in 2019. Back then, we're 25% higher. So that's a lot of money that's going on your groceries. That's not rent. Rent is going to wrap here. I want to thank y'all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.